All right, so this is the second video I'm doing where I take some of my old computers and test them to see how well they do in regards to retro emulation. And in case you haven't seen the first video, basically what I'm trying to do here is take these older computers and see how they compare in price and performance against the lower end plug and play systems that you'll find on Amazon, uh, sites like that for typically around $100 on the low end. From what I've read about those systems, they tend to cap out around PlayStation 1. They'll run some like 2D PS1 games, but when you get into the more uh, advanced games where there's more going on, the games that are more challenging to run, they tend to peak out. And even though they do peak out at around that range, there is a benefit to those systems, namely that they're plug and play. They're ready to go, loaded with games and everything you need. You're pretty much all set. But if you have the ability ability to make your own DIY emulation system, you can often, for the same price or a little less, make a system that runs just as well or better uh, for a better price. The computer we're going to review in this video is the Optiplex 3060 Micro. And I have two of these computers that I'm eventually going to test. Spoiler alert, I think this one is better than the other. You'll see when we get into the specs and stuff. But it's the one we're doing first. And the reason uh, I'd like to review some of these micro form factor computers is because of a lot of people who are doing retro emulation, they aren't necessarily concerned with running the most high-end games Games. They just want something convenient, small, out of the way that they can place beside their TV and then occasionally hop into a little bit of retro gaming when they're bored or something. And I should preface this also by saying that I understand if you have a $300 computer, it's going to be, it's going to emulate just about anything you need it to. But that being said, again, the, the emphasis is on finding computers that are in the same price range as the lower end pre-built systems. So we will test out some games and different systems here in a little bit towards uh, the end of the video. But first let's break this open, go over the specs. And because I'm horribly unorganized, we will need to crack this open on the mighty chair desk. Chair desk! Alright, so we're going to crack open the case here. And this computer, uh, I paid about $100 for it. It's not uncommon to find it for that price, though there are a few things that I'll show you here that will affect whether it's worth it for that cost. One thing I like about this model specifically is they made it really easy to get to the different components and swap things out. When I bought this, it actually, it only came with four gigabytes of RAM, but I added another four gigs for testing purposes, and I made a video on that if you're interested, it's on the videos page. First of all, we have our SSD holder here. It's really simple to get out, just pop it out of there. Now here's one of those things I was talking about whenever I mentioned I kind of lucked out. This has a 500 gigabyte NVMe hard drive, and these things actually, they, they're they usually have a pretty high value in terms of drives. I'd say the average price you typically see those go for, even used, is around $40. So that in itself, with the $100 price tag, there's really value just in the fact that it still has that NVMe hard drive. And though I'm going to keep Windows on that, I don't think I'm going to use that for testing. What I'm going to do instead, I already have an SSD with Bodicera loaded on it. I'm just going to drop the SSD in there and test it that way. But keep in mind that if you were, if you did have the adapter or whatever, and you can flash your system to the NVMe drive, you'll probably get a little bit of additional speed. Now they also made this very easy to remove this fan, to kind of look at your components uh, beneath. That's kind of what I like about how they designed this. Here's our 8 gigabytes of RAM, and you can't see it beneath the heatsink, but it actually has an 8th gen i3 processor. It's the Intel i3-8100. And the i3, it's 8th uh, gen is the generation where they went from a dual core processor in the i3 to having four cores. And I have certain feelings about that move. I understand why they wanted to add more cores, 
But I don't like how the entire point of the i3 was that it was its own thing. It's a it's a dual core processor that runs at a higher clock speed than the i5, which has more cores, which is actually good for emulation. But when they moved to the eighth gen, instead of making a I mean, in essence, instead of making a better version of the 7th gen i3, they just made a crappier version of the 7th gen i5. But that's a whole other thing. So in case you're not familiar, the i3-8100T is a variation of the i3-8100 that uses less power to run. That's what the T signifies. And that's sort of the downside of these micro form factor models is that they, they don't use the standard processor, but rather the one that runs on less power and therefore means it has a lower clock speed. But as far as specs, the 8100T is a four core processor that runs at 3.1 gigahertz and that combined with the 8 gigs ddr4 ram i do have somewhat high expectations for this and one other thing as i mentioned that you might want to look out for and consider in regards to what you would pay for one of these uh, not only the nvme hard drive you want to pay attention to what kind of hard drive comes with it to understand if it's worth what you're paying but also if it comes with a power adapter which this one again it did if it doesn't come with the power adapter that's another 15 to 20 dollars that it's going to cost you so that's something to keep in mind okay so i've removed the nvme hard drive and i'm going to pull the ssd out of the system i'm currently using I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. Not the pool noodle I have in the background. It's best just not to ask questions about the pool noodle. This is something, uh, an SSD holder you can replace your optical drive with as I very rarely have a need for an optical drive. So unfortunately it doesn't work in the same way uh, through power, but I glued this nifty little handle to it and as you can see, you can sort of hot swap SSDs. The SSD just sits in this caddy. So now I'm just going to remove the SSD with Bodicera with the game system. I'll put it back in there later. And we're going to put it in the hard drive caddy for our system. Again, they made this thing really convenient. I really do like the design. Uh, of this, of the Optiplex 3060. Caddy is very simple, it doesn't even require screws. There's just these little pins that you drop into where the screws would go. Then you just drop this in, and there's no data cables or power cables, you just slide it into place. It's all built right onto the motherboard. You just slide it in, and it just locks right into place. Okay, so we've booted up the system successfully. Two things I want to note right off the bat. First of all, this device itself is like surprisingly quiet. I can't even hear the fan running inside. And also it does have its own internal speaker, which is not bad at all compared to other internal speakers I've heard. That being said, let's get into the moment of truth and do some games testing. So I'm starting with Nintendo 64, Zelda Ocarina of Time. I'm going to skip the systems like Genesis and NES because quite frankly you could probably run those systems on a piece of toast. And so far, yeah, I'd say it's running really well. The game, it looks sharp, it looks really nice, the gameplay is smooth. This isn't necessarily the most demanding N64 game, but judging by how well this is running, I don't think we're going to have any problems running N64 on this computer. Next up is Sega Saturn, and while the Saturn is an older system, it is also known for being difficult to emulate. But that being said, it's very responsive. It's running smoothly. I'm not noticing any delays or frame rate dropping. It feels nice overall. I don't think you're going to have any issues running Saturn on this computer. Moving on and moving up, Kingdom Hearts 2 for PlayStation 2, and I'm actually really su I'm pretty surprised with this system. It is not having any problems running this at all. Feels really nice, it's responsive, I'm not seeing any frame dropping, it's, it's really smooth. Yeah, I'm definitely, I don't think you're going to have issues. Maybe when you get into some of the more advanced PlayStation 2 games, like racing games, are always a challenge. Maybe you'll see some issues, 
but as we move on through other games and other systems we'll get a better idea of where it's going to sort of cap out. Right now it's feeling good though. Alright, PSP, Lord of Arcana. And once again, I'm not noticing any issues. This is a 3D game that's pretty graphically intense. And even when using the camera a lot and moving it around quite a bit, it's smooth and has no issues. I'm going to try to get it, I'm going to get into the settings and see if we can do upscaling. I, I, I'm worried that might be pushing it a little too much, but it's worth a try. Let's try to scale it up just a little bit. Okay, so I have two times rendering and two times on the upscale. <laughs> and, and it's, it's even sharper now, it looks good, and the camera controls, the movement, everything still still feels great. Again, I'm getting more and more impressed the more I use this little PC. This could be a really good option all around. I was expecting like significantly reduced performance when we're dropping down to the micro sizes, but I feel like you could do some serious gaming on this. So this system is kicking ass. And I'm struggling. I feel like I'm in a quest to find the upper limits here. So I jumped to Wii U and we're running Mario Kart 8 on Wii U. And even the... Uh, it's, it's definitely playable, but I can tell we're kind of getting into the upper limits here. There's some minor frame skipping. It's some just pauses here and there. It's not quite as smooth as the other games. So I'd say this is probably roughly where you're going to cap out. Right, so as you can tell, I'm really pleasantly surprised by how well this thing did, especially for being uh, the micro form factor. If you're just looking to do some basic retro emulation, not trying to do anything crazy, I think this would definitely be a good uh, option to consider, especially for that price range. Like I said, it's it's not uncommon to find these for around $100. The specs you get on it might vary, but overall a really solid choice that I'm surprised with. This will probably be one of my main emulation machines. But anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, as always. Uh, we're going to be getting into, we're going to review some other computers, some, another, like I said, I have that other microcomputer that's not as good as that, though the price point is much lower if you're just looking to do some more basic emulation. I'm also doing some larger, closer to full-sized desktops that are inexpensive that I have a feeling are going to be like beast mode when it comes to retro emulation. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for that. And yeah, again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.